Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we have a guest designer, Mid Knits, and this is doing the Crochet Throw Pillow, a Canadian design. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So in today's pattern, it's just a one page pattern. It's actually really quite simple because you're going to follow this graph that you see here. I'm going to take you through the ins and outs on being able to follow this. So you're going to be using split half double crochet with these particular ideas. It actually makes the pillow look like that it's knit even though it's even cr it's crocheted. So you're going to need an N as in Nancy size 10 millimeter crochet hook today and it's suggested for the Bernat Maker Home Deck yarn as well. So without further ado, if you're comfortable with this design, good luck for that. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take you through the ins and outs of reading this chart so that you know what to do and then I'm going to get you started with how to do the stitch work and then I'm going to bring you up and show you how to change your yarn colors because this is using tapestry uh, grafgan work. So let's uh, without further ado let's take a look at the chart carefully. So here's a copy of the graph all blown up and we have the letters A. E-H equals A. It's a Canadian slang. We use it all the time. I use it all the time because I'm Canadian. So what we have here is that it looks like it's going to be a rectangular pillow but it's just the way that the chart look or the graph looks. It's not going to be rectangular. It's going to be squared. You have to put some trust in me with that. So what you'll notice here is that you'll have darker lines every 10 boxes. So you got 10 here. Here's another group of 10. Here's another group of 10 and in the height you also have that as well as a guide. So what's going to happen is that it's going to ask you to chain a certain amount to begin and it's 37. So you're going to start underneath the graph so you're not part doing this graph yet and you're going to chain 37 along and it's going to come out here. And row number one right here starts here. So when you start row number one you're going in this direction okay and so I put an arrow on the side here to show me that I'm going in this direction. So then when I go to row number two I'm going to turn my work and do row number two going in the other direction across like this. And then once I get that done is that I then go in another uh, row and I turn my work and now I'm going. So when you go to read this you need to read it like a snaking formation. You don't read these charts from going doing row number one and then coming back and doing row number two and then row number three. You have to snake it up and down like this in order to get these letters to work out properly. So here's the thing. How many rows of a solid color do you need to do in order to before you get to the letter or to the word A? It's 17. So you see this here. So from rows 1 through 17 is just going to be split half double crochet back and forth. So the only exception is is that the first row there is, you can't do a split in the first row. So that's just going to be half double crochets as you work in your way across just like you see. But once you get onto row number 2, 3 and the remaining of this whole thing it's going to be split half double crochets including when you do the letters. So what happens in the letter section here? Let's talk a little bit about that. So after you've done your snaking formation you would have done 17 rows and then you're going to end up hitting this A. Now this is called tapestry crochet and the reason for it it's called tapestry is that the other colors that you have so in this case it will be white as the pillow will drag underneath the stitches of E. Not behind the E right underneath the stitches and I'll show you how to do that. So what you have to do is that you have to count your boxes. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have 6 boxes and you might want to write these things down on your graph so that you know that there's always going to be 6 boxes in a row before you hit the letter E when you're on this side. Okay and then on this side let's count how many boxes there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So that you know that there's going to be 7 boxes here before you hit the exclamation mark. So what you're going to do is that as you pick up here we're going to start the letter E. Now here's the thing. It's tapestry crochet so this color will drag underneath the stitches while you're in the E. Then it will pop up just once and then we'll uh, pop it down again and get the, the red up again for three and then pop it down and get the three up. And it's just the colors just changing each other as you're going along and drag underneath the stitches. The thing about the A is that the red strand never drags to the outside. So whenever it stops at the very end you just leave it hanging here and then you just go with the regular color and then come back and pick it up again. So the red color does not go all the way across your pillow. Let's see if I can get another picture just to show you how that's working. 
So here's another photo here and this is from the designer herself and you can see how the, the, the work is dragging up underneath. So let me just tell you a little bit about that. So the designer is kind of showing you how she's doing it here. So as she's doing the red she's dragging the white underneath the stitches and then it will pop up for the white again and then we'll pop back down and do the red. So the red here that you see never goes out to the final outsides. It only stays right underneath the stitches just like you see. So as we get into this project I'm going to show you how to change your colors back and forth by dragging the strings underneath the stitches itself and then you can create a pillow like this. Because it's tapestry crochet you'll notice that this will go pretty, pretty quickly and I think the hardest part is just getting started so you can see where the stitches are but once you notice where the stitches are and you cross compare it to the graph I think you'll have great success. So without further ado I'm going to show you how to do the stitch work next and then we'll move forward and then I'll show you how to do the letters. So let's show you how to do the basic stitch work to make this happen. So you're gonna chain 37, just create a slip knot, leave an extra long tail. For tutorial reasons I'm going to start you with the color green. I've already got a partial sample on the go that is in gray. So you'll notice that it will change color in today's tutorial. So you're just gonna chain 37. I'm just gonna do a small one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So what I want you to do is go all the way to 37 and then meet me back here in just a moment. So what we have now is that when we go back to the chart now and we're gonna start row number one. This is the first set of boxes that you see. In row number one it's only half double crochets across the chain and then in rows number two all the way to the right top of this particular project is that it'll all be split half double crochet right to the very end. So let's begin row number one. So let's start row number one. You wanna go third chain from the hook. So count it back so you've got one, two, and three. And what I want you to do is that I want to make sure that you wrap the hook first and going into the chain make sure that there's two strands of yarn from the chain going on top of the hook and only one at the bottom. Usually I always show the back hump only. In this case I want you to have two strands on top. It's important. So you just pull through and then you pull through all three just like you see there. So now what you're going to do is that can all across your chain you're just gonna half double crochet. So go into the next chain. Make sure two strands of yarn stay on the top from this section here and pull through and pull, across, uh, pull all the way through three. So just half double crochet all the way across your chain and then maybe at the end of this chain and we'll start row number two. So in the chart we're now going to start row number two. So we look at the chart from this side and go back like so. So what I like to do is just grab a highlighter or just grab some kind of marking device and say that you've officially done row number one. So I'm just gonna circle row number one here and do a check mark knowing that I have done it. So now we're gonna do split half double crochet all the way across. So let's begin row number two. So let's start our very first one and what we need to do is a split half double crochet and we're gonna look right down to the base of where you are and you'll see that there is two legs to a stitch. So let me just get another pointing device. So right here is normally where we would go right into this particular stitch as you're going across the top but it's a split. So you have to look for the legs of it and see these two right here? That's the legs. You wanna put your hook right between those two and so each one of the stitches has two legs and so can you see where those are? So you see it's right in between there, between there and there. So what we want to do is we wanna start our first set. So coming right down in between the very first one is that just wrap the hook and then just push the hook right between the legs of the stitch. Doing the first one is always uh, more challenging than the rest and then pull it through and then half double crochet as normal. Okay. So then we go to the next set of legs. So normally we would go into the top of the stitch but we're looking between the legs and then just drive the hook right through it. So what this is doing is causing the half double crochet to sit partially over top of the other group and it thickens up your material quite nicely. So you're going to split half double crochet in this row and all rows going forward even when you're doing the letters itself. The whole thing is split and because you're doing it as a split it makes the whole project look like it's knitted. So you just keep on going as a split half double crochet looking for the legs. Now once you get started with this it gets a lot easier to hold and a lot more um, uh, 
how do you say it? It's a lot smoother. It's just a matter of getting used to doing this partic uh, particular stitch in order to do it but the looks are amazing and I had this particular pillow in a live show and people love this pillow. So don't uh, give up on this particular uh, stitch work uh, really easily because honestly it's a really cool thing to, to know about. So we want to split double crochet ourselves all the way or split half double crochet all the way to the very end of your work. Okay, so just keep on going. So here it is. So this last one here, the turning chain, you can't do anything with the turning chain. So what you have to just do is that you just have to split and stop here. So the turning chain is kind of like what we did here in the chain two in the beginning as we went down into the same stitch. So let's turn our work and let's start row number three. So in the chart, let me bring you back there. So in the chart, we've now just done row number two. So here's row number three and we're gonna go in this direction. So I'm gonna circle the uh, two and say that I did it and now we go in three in this direction. So it's important that you know which directions you're going in on these charts. So let's begin row number three. All rows start off the same. You're just gonna chain up two just like you see there and then we come down in and split. The very first one is always the toughest because your tension is usually tighter than the rest and so you just split just like you had been before and you continue to go. So where is the next split? You can see that they're more open. See, those are the legs. Just drive it right through the legs of the stitch. So you're just gonna do these rows, all of them, just like this and what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna make sure that you get started and we're gonna uh, bring you up to doing the letters and, and just a moment. So you're gonna continue to go and do these rows. So the solid color is rows one through 17. You're gonna wanna make a note of that and just do that work and then we're going to get a little more complicated by introducing the letters in there and uh, you'll see how easy it is actually to get done. I guess the only complicated thing is that you gotta read the, the graph which is really not a deal breaker. So when you come to the very end, remember there was a chain two that you're not worrying about. You're just going into the last half double crochet and split it up and then that's good to go. So you're going to notice it's gonna kinda wanna look like it's a semicircle. that's just tension and then just open it up. So turn your work, start another row, so chain two, go to the legs of the first half double crochet, right underneath it and then just keep on driving through the legs of the stitch. So please do that all the way uh, until you get to row number 17, get, finish row number 17 and then row number 18. We're gonna start doing the letters next. So in the next part of this tutorial, I'm gonna assume that you've got rows number one through 17 completed. Now we're going to then do row number 18 but we're gonna start doing the letter. Now my particular sample is smaller than what you have here so I'm just gonna show you the technique of changing colors in and out in order to make sense of this particular idea and as again you're gonna follow across, you're gonna start the E on this side and then you're gonna come back and then do the next row going in the next direction and then so on. So you wanna snake it back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna show you some techniques on being able to follow. So the first Six stitches will be the regular color you've been working with and then we're gonna switch off to red and the technique is that switch. What happens with one yarn and when should you switch and that's what we're gonna cover next. So let's assume I got rows number one through 17 done. I turned my work and now I'm going to do the next row. So we know that the E is gonna start on uh, the seventh stitch in but I'm not gonna bring my red out. So as I mentioned in, uh, at the start of this is that the first section of here there's gonna be six before the E starts and then there's seven after the exclamation mark. I'm just gonna show you uh, just a rough example. So we're gonna As a word of caution in this particular kind of project you will notice that the front face pillow has a really good solid red when it's red and cream when it's cream. Now I have to tell you this is not the back of it so therefore it looks clean. So let me show you what the back looks like because that's where the key trick is. So you can see that the back does not look as clean and all of the yarn strands that are dragged through are always dragged through favoring the back side of the project. So for example let me show you a mistake that I have already done in today's tutorial and I wanna show you it. So if this was the back of the project, the gray dragging through was fine. But the problem is, is that in my last one that I just did, 
is that you can see that the gray is dragging through on this side. So therefore no matter how I turn this thing and especially if it's spe spelling a letter that needs to be one sided is that I have to favor the side that has it. So what I need to do is that I need to backtrack out and I have to switch the side that I'm favoring. So let's uh, begin to do this. So let's just keep the red going and what I want to do is that I want to drag this so it's favoring to stay on this side of the work. So when I go in I want to go in and I want to split it but I want to make sure that this stays clearly on this side of the project. Okay, so you just want to adjust it a little bit and work your way across. Therefore all of the, the yarn strands will then stay out of the view of the other side. Okay, so it requires you to pay attention when you're going to do this. So you need to do this with all the colors of paying attention what is your good side and what is your back side. And once you get a hold of this idea you'll notice that you'll get faster because you're automatically doing it. So this is going to switch back to the gray. So let's pull the gray up and I want to keep that red so it's still favoring the same side so it stays on the back side of the project. So again pulling it so that it stays on this side and therefore this would be good. So you want to pull it onto the side that has the is the back side of it so that you get a nice clean look on the other side. So if this was a, for example say this was the good side and I wanted the, the yarn to stay in favor on the back side. So instead of pulling it forward like I am now I will push it back and then I will go around it so it favors on the back side. Okay, so you have to be paying attention to what is your good side and what's your bad side with these kind of ideas. Okay, so if I push that to the back see what happens is that it will pull it so that the red is really truly bleeding through just like so. So it's something that you're going to need to pay attention with this and paying attention to what is your good side and back side. So this is the back side here so if when I turn it around it will be a nice solid red just like you see. So we're gonna start up our next row. So Let's begin to do that and then we are going to then start. So let's just say that this is the actual project and I'm going to do the, um, the first six boxes of just this. But here's the trick. You really can't finish six boxes because of the way that the colors are working out. So let's just say that I get five in here and then I'll show you how to play with the colors after that. Okay, so I'm just doing my split as I normally have been doing. So I have one, two, three, four and this is the fifth and the sixth is still this color but we have to prepare for the next color. So what I want you to do is that I want you just to start the six and do a split. So just going into the sixth one and pull through and here's the thing. You can't use this color to finish this. You have to use your next color. So leave an extra long tail of the new color and use that to pull through. And what this is is that it's allowing you to have the stitch colors proper. See what you have here with these loops is the next top of the next loop. So but, uh, think about this as a house. Whenever you finish a stitch it's the roof of the next house to it. So in this case uh, what we have I'm just gonna do a, a, just a rough idea and what I want to do is that I want to drop this color. Okay, I wanna drop it and I wanna carry it with me and I wanna push this other straggler in behind. So it's out of the way and we'll fasten that out later. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to grab this straggler. Okay, this is the, uh, the other color and what we want to do is drag it with us. So we're gonna start the next stitch and going in and splitting it. Split the next one and what I want to do is leave this straggler down on top so it gets stuck underneath the stitches. Okay, and I wanna finish it with red. So this gray is actually being hidden underneath the stitch work of the red. Do you see that? So now let's begin and do another one. So we just split the next one and we just have to drag the yarn that is not in use underneath the stitches. So not behind so when you turn it around it will not be showing it behind. It is just dragging right up underneath the stitches. So keep the tension and just keep on going. So you're going to look at the chart and count the number of boxes that you need to do. So let's just say for example the E is now finishing up 
and I'm gonna finish this stitch and the the um, gray is gonna start up in this second box over. So in order to do that the next one is gonna be red, pull through and you're gonna drop the red and you're gonna bring up the gray and you're gonna finish it. So the ne and then you're gonna lay down the red on top and then just carry it across like you had done with the gray. You see that? So your work is just being carried up underneath the work or up underneath the stitches. The trick is is to keep your tension so give it a, a, a pull. Don't be over uh, pulling just pull it snug and then when you're ready to switch colors again so let's say we're gonna switch it so then this last one is gonna be gray and then we, we drop the gray and then we finish it with the red to bring back red. We leave the gray down on top again and we just carry on just like that. Do you see that? So you're just having to manipulate your yarns in order to carry across. So now if, say for example this is the letter the end of the exclamation mark that we were getting to. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change the color in the next one. So just uh, continue to split it and to finish that box then you have to change the color and finish it. And then what you wanna do because this is the end of the exclamation mark you want to pull this yarn in front and leave it in front and finish off the rest of the stitch work. So what we what I'm saying to you is that you don't drag that yarn all the way to the edge of your material you leave it to where it is right now. Okay that's the only time that's kinda like bobbin work for doing graph gans. Just like that. Okay so whenever we need this red back we're gonna bring back the red right where you see it. So let's turn our work and let's uh, just go up. So in right now then if this was the exclamation mark it's gonna be over here and this will be the letter E just like you see. So let's uh, begin and we're going to do the next one. So we're gonna chain up two and then we just split the first one like we had been before. And this letter is pretty boxy. So it really it just uh, it, right where you stopped is right where you're gonna pick it back up. And so the next stitch of red is gonna be right over top of it. So I'm just kinda looking for it. Once you get the first one established it's easy. So you can see the next one is gray and then the next one is red. So I'm gonna finish this gray one here. Okay, but I wanna be prepared for the red so I gotta drop this one and then grab that red one that was sitting in behind. Just like that and I wanna finish it with the red and I wanna pull my tension a little snug on the gray. So now the red is ready. I laid down the gray and I just split then the red section here and keep that gray underneath the stitch work and I keep on going. So let's just say I'm gonna match these colors together. So I'm really just looking for the stitch color that is underneath in order to keep me in balance. Like so. And you're gonna be following your boxes of color anyway and you're gonna go and you'll notice that the next box is gray or the next stitch is gonna be gray. So in order to have that ready for gray you have to drop the red and bring the gray through as the final so we're now switched and ready to go for the gray. So we just continue the gray, keep the red down on top of the bar, uh, on top of the stitch and then just keep on going. So you can use the idea of these, of these um, boxes as your, your markers for color, right? So you just compare and once you get it started just pull your tension if you need to. It's really quite easy to be able to just change out. So you'll notice that the next one is gonna be red here. So we're gonna drop the gray get the red right back into our hands and finish that stitch with red so that you can start that first one using red and then drop that gray one down. 
and that's all you have to do for this. You just have to follow the chart and just watch the colors go in the snaking formation and you can get the letters A to be uh, worked out perfectly and because it's tapestry crochet it actually goes pretty quickly. The letters are pretty boxy so there's not a lot to think about uh, for shaping and, and etc. It's just really quite simple. I think that's why people like it. The simplicity so don't ever underestimate that. So you're just gonna come with this one but you notice that the next uh, stitch is gray. So drop that red down and you're going and you're gonna bring it in front because it's the last time the red will appear before the edge and then just use your gray then to finish it up. So leave that red down. And just do your stitch work across. So the goal is is that whenever you finish off using the color you don't drag it all the way through you just leave it where it's supposed to be and then you pick it up next time as you're going all the way across. So let me show you another technique just in case that you have to drag colors longer. So you're just coming to the end and then you just have to look at your chart see where you are on it and then just turn your work and then just begin the next section. So the next section we're gonna start off with gray as we normally have been on the outside and then we worry about the red as we hit that particular spot. Okay, so because we had pulled the red in front last time it's ready to for you to go in the back as you pull it forward. So you can either look at the and count the number of stitches or you can just look at your shape and see if you, you're getting it pretty close. Um, this is a really quite an easy pattern to be able to follow. So the next one here is gray and then it will transition to red in the next one. So we want to drop that gray. We want to bring back that red that is sitting in behind. So we pull it forward Okay, and then we just start using the red and splitting and then we leave down the gray once again. So this is how you just uh, change in and out your colors when you're going to work. Just watch your tension. Make sure you're pulling things nice and uh, snug as you go and you should be good to go. So let's uh, quickly review what's left for this pattern to be able to do. So you're gonna be able to do this whole pillow. Once you get past the letters then you'll go back to solid then just to finish it. You'll wanna do this front face twice so that you have a front and the back of your project. So what, what you can do too if you don't wanna do letters for the back you can just do a solid uh, split half double crochet in the back and then put that together as well. And then all you just need to do is take a darning needle and then put the two halves together and then just sew it shut on here. Before you sew it shut though make sure you put in a pillow frame, uh, form that's in there. They're a 20 inch uh, square pillow form. I would recommend a form versus just uh, stuffing. It'll keep it nice and solid and lasting a very long time because of the yarn. So this is how you do this tapestry crochet with dragging your yarns through it and just being able to follow on the chart. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd and a special thanks to Midnits for allowing me to be able to do this design here with you on camera. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.